Well, good morning to all of you. Good to be with you today. Uh, welcome to, oh, it's praise and worship. I was going to welcome you to Restore, uh, but welcome to praise and worship. We're glad to have you with us today. In case you haven't recognized yet, I'm not Pastor Mark. Um, Pastor Barry instead. Uh, normally I would be out at Restore this morning, uh, but uh, at a request from Pastor Mark to fill in for him today, we did a little swapping around out at Restore, so you have me. If you picked up a half sheet this morning, this is what we, this looks exactly like what we'd hand out every Sunday at Restore, which means you got kind of a stripped down order of service. And Anthony wanted me to remind you that he has a coloring half sheet on the back. So in case the sermon gets a little boring, you need to do some coloring. Uh, you can color in uh, Jesus and the 12 disciples. I think it's 12 disciples on the back. A couple of announcements we're supposed to make this morning. Um, like I said, this is going to be kind of like a restore service with the ex one exception. The end of services at uh, Restore, we have talk back time. In other words, we give you about 10 minutes to mingle amongst yourself, and then if you're interested, you come on down and you can ask questions about the sermon or about anything. So we have talk back time. Uh, we're not going to do that today. Uh, I've pretty much run out of answers because I just got back uh, Friday, Friday from a week in prison, teaching all week in prison, and doing a rather lengthy interview yesterday with people who were interested in church planting. So if I still have some voice left at the end of the service today, that'll be great. Um, you got some other announcements on your half sheet. I'm going to take for granted that you guys can read and you can read those. And finally, we have an announcement. Where is Doug Mance? Right here. He is going to update you on finances. So hold on to your wallets and listen to these words. Thank you, Pastor Barry. Um, I want to thank you for coming and uh, helping us this morning. Um, that we gave him a like two-day notice that he needed to do this, so I appreciate that. As he said, Mark's not here today. Um, Mark came to the leaders and asked for some time off to uh, regenerate himself, and uh, the response to that was, that sounds like a great idea, let's do it right now. And so um, Mark's taking some time off. He started Wednesday, and he'll be back June the 1st. And so uh, I would ask you to keep Mark in his prayers. He's also going to be doing some traveling, we understand, during that time. So if you can keep him in your prayers as to his safe travel and that he comes back to us both refreshed and rejuvenated. Re-energized is, I guess, the word he, was, he talked about. For those of you that were in service last uh, Sunday, it seemed to me Mark was um, uh, on fire. <laughs> and so if that's the uh, low energy Mark, I'm interested in seeing the high energy Mark when he gets back to us. The, uh, at the uh, bottom on the right-hand side, there's a financial report that was prepared by our treasurer, Julie Bell. And I just wanted to speak uh, about uh, those numbers just a little bit. The budget that we uh, made for this year called for us to have equal amounts of income and expenses. And that, of course, is not going to happen every month, uh, but for the year, that's what, that was our expectation. So far this year, um, the good news is that we're spending about 10% less than we had expected to for the first four months. Unfortunately, uh, revenue income is down about is only 75% of what we expected so you can see here that uh, that we've had a deficit in the first four months good news is that we had a large cash reserve at the very beginning of this year so we were able to cover that deficit and in fact we still have a considerable cash reserve and so should we continue to have some deficits um, we should be able to handle that um, one of the things that, uh, that we have done, the leadership team has done, is we are all on board with uh, evaluating all expenditures to make sure that they're appropriate and we're keeping them in, in check as best we can. 
On a slightly different topic, there, the old white um, offering box, the wood one that's set on the table, um, is, has been retired. And you will notice now that there's a new black one with, uh, and it's metal, that has a little uh, lid on it that you can open up and put your offering in there. And it uh, takes much less room on the table was the, was the goal. So we've got a new one of those. Um, uh, I guess that's, that's all I wanted to talk about this morning. And thank you very much. And again, thanks, Pastor Barry, for helping us this morning. And we don't have an offering box either at uh, Restore, but one of the inmates down in prison made us one. And uh, it's a beautiful wood box, and it's really a prayer box, and so we have a little sign next to ours that said, if you have any gifts or prayer requests. Uh, the guy's name is, uh, I know him by two different names. His real name is Dennis McGee, uh, but he's also known down in prison as Bubba Gum. And uh, Bubba Gum can't wait to come out, get out of prison to come to restore and help out. And I just think that's going to be a wonderful day when we have the first black guy walk into church and help us out. But Bubba's on fire. Well, with those announcements being made, let's make our begin in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I think it'd be a good idea now to stand up and really belt out how great thou art. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God is Son, not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died, to take away my sin, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art. How great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Well, that's good enough. I could have the benediction. We all go home. <laughs> but we're not. Please be seated. You're going to see some words up on the screen. Uh, we don't do what's normally called confession and absolution at Restore, but we talk about words of brokenness and words of restoration. And you'll see some passages on the screen. I'm going to, going to take you through these. We're going to start with Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20. 
It says, surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Isn't that interesting? Never sins. But I can remember the time I met with a man in my office years ago. And I said, well, what sin are you here to confess? He said, oh, I don't sin. They were just momentary indiscretions. <laughs> and I thought, uh, so momentary indiscretion is spelled S-I-N. He didn't like that word. But I'm assuming today that none of us would sit here and say, I'm without sin. That's because it doesn't make a difference who you are, whether you are the pastor or whether you're a musician or who you are. We are broken people. We're broken in a variety of ways. And I'm not going to draw a distinction. I spent all week in prison down in Louisiana, a day at Hunt, Correctional in Baton Rouge, three days at Angola. And you'd say, yeah, those are broken people. But they're no broken, more broken than you are or than I, than I am because of sin. So we dare not say we all do good and never sin. Let's look at the next verse. It's from 1 John chapter 8 and 9. If we say that we have no sin, well, <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going to acknowledge our brokenness this morning. We deceive ourselves. And the truth, the truth is not in us. Now, you stop and think about that word truth. The first thing I thought about when I took that verse was, who was it who said, I am way the truth and the life? It was Jesus. So think about it this way. If I say I have no sin, I deceive myself, and Jesus is not even in me. The real truth is not there. But if we confess our sins, now, in this denomination that we're a part of, we don't have private confession. We have public confession or public acknowledgement, acknowledging that we are indeed broken people. And it says that if we confess that sin, if we acknowledge that sin, if we recognize that sin, what? He is faithful. He's just. And he forgives that sin, and then he cleanses us from all of that dirtiness in our life. It's like we come with a whole bag full of broken bones, and we acknowledge the fact that we're broken, and what he's going to do is he's going to put all of that back together where it belongs. Another passage has to do with brokenness, Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. And there are people who are ashamed of the gospel. They don't want to hear the good news of Jesus. They don't want to believe everything that's in the word of God or they learn to bend the word of God to fit what it is that they want to believe in today's world. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I love the Bible. When somebody asked me to be involved in prison ministry a number of years ago, the guy who wanted me to be a part of that says, is your pastor a biblicist? <laughs> Does he love God's word? Yes, I love God's word. And guess what? You're, you're really privileged to have and to pray for another pastor who also loves God's word, who normally would be sitting over here when he wasn't be yapping up here, Pastor Mark. You're mean but wonder what I'm doing here today and who's taking my place at Restore. I'm very thankful that we have somebody like Jeff Mitten, part of our team, who also loves the word and is talking today about Jesus in the book of Genesis. We're not ashamed of God's word, for it is what? It is the power, the, the Greek word dunamis, dynamite. It's the dynamite of God for salvation, everyone who believes. So we have a way to take care of all the broken parts in our lives. Now, we are located in the community. You don't know where Restore is. We're in a community where there's a lot of brokenness, drug abuse, broken families, single parent families, all kinds of things, and this word of brokenness needs to be taken to these people, but not to point out sin, but to say there is a way out. And so now you see a word of restoration, on the, uh, restoration, and we like that word because, of course, it's got the word part of restore in it. We like that of being restored. Uh, you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world 
We talked a little bit about that in Bible class this morning. But here it says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn us. That's good news. But in order that the world might be saved through him. Do you recognize that you are broken in some way? Pretty simple answer. You can either say yes or no. And if you're not sure, come talk to me after a while. We'll talk about your momentary indiscretions. <laughs> But if that's where you are this morning, friends, acknowledging that you're broken, the word of God says you can be restored. You can be healed. The parts can be put back together. And you can become that, well, the Bible talks about a new man. And I suppose if I were politically correct, I'd substitute some woke term in there, but I don't know woke terms. So you're going to be a new man or a new woman because of God's love. It's always my privilege. One of the great things, you know, <clears throat> pastors get to do a few things that are really kind of cool. I think one of the coolest things I get to do is to stand up in front of people and say, in the name and in the stead of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I announce the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May all the parts that are broken be restored in Jesus. The reading I chose for today comes from Matthew chapter 10, and we have Lair sharing those words of scripture. Matthew chapter 10. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts, and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. How many of you have chosen that as your life verse? Probably not very many. I mean, I know mine, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your path. But I don't think there's anybody that I've ever met that would choose that verse, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. It's not the most inspiring picture that you can find in Scripture. After all, who wants to be a sheep among wolves. Count me out. But I want you to notice here that Jesus, how he puts it, he said, I'm sending you out. He did not say, you are going out amongst the wolves. In other words, this is kind of like a divine, personal, great commission. I am intentionally sending you out of this safe little sheep pen called praise and worship. And when you get out the door, you're not going to see a sign that says you're now entering the mission field. It's going to say, beware of wolves. Some of you want to stay here all day, I know. It kind of means something like this. You wake up one morning and you find yourself surrounded by wolves. Don't be surprised, Jesus says. They aren't there by accident. I intended for you to be there right in the middle of these wolves. 
Now, I'm going to step back a little bit, and I want to speak as one of the sheep. I, I, this is challenging to me. But here we are gathered, at, like I said, in this sheep pen called Praise and Worship. And at the same time, there are a certain number of sheep that are over in the sheep pen known as Restore. We'd kind of like to all just stay in there, particularly if we know that there are wolves outside the gates. We might be asking questions like, Lord, why would you do this? I mean, wolves eat sheep. I don't want to hang around with wolves. If it's all the same to you, Lord, I just want to stay here today where the wolves can't get me. And what am I supposed to do when a wolf comes after me? Those are pretty fair questions because it's not a fair fight. The wolves are undefeated lifetime against sheep. They make any football team, including Joel's and my beloved Cornhuskers, look pretty weak. When you send sheep out amongst wolves, guess what? You can be sure that the wolves will be eating what for supper? Lamb chops, a lamb burger. I mean, it's just not a fair fight. So let's be clear about something here. Jesus is saying, you are the sheep. I am the shepherd. All around you are ravenous wolves. People out there who do not believe what it is that you believe. I see them. I know they're out there. I know they want to kill you. But I'm going to send you out of this place anyway. Are some of you already starting to get worried about walking out the front door of this sheep pen today? Let's be honest. This is something really hard for us to understand. It seems almost like a death sentence in a way uh, given to us by our shepherd. I mean, Jesus is not sending sheep out with this kind of a, a general warning. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, when you go out of here today, uh, be a little careful out there because this is kind of wolf country. Now, that's kind of true, of course, but Jesus means a whole lot more than that. He's really saying we are here and all around us, God has planted us in a place of people who do not know what it takes to become a sheep. That's why I'm going to send you all out into the middle of these wolves. Now, again, I'm going to tell you, it kind of sounds like suicide. I mean, nothing could be as frightening to a sheep as to have somebody say, I'm sending you out amongst wolves. But that's exactly what Jesus is saying here. But understand, this is divine sovereignty here. This is God talking. And if God talks and he asks us to do something, anywhere I look in my word, it says God sends the tools along to do it, and he's going to give us some reasons to do it. Jesus is saying something about our dangerous calling here as disciples, as, as sheep, and it's this, that you and I in the world are kind of in danger all day long Provided we don't run from this little sheep pen to the little sheep pen where we live and hunker down there all the time. I visit a coffee shop six days a week, and I kind of try to listen to see if I can enter into conversations. And sometimes I enter into conversation with sheep. That's kind of fun, isn't it? Sheep talking, sheep talk. That's kind of fun. We all encourage one another in Jesus. But every once in a while... I come across a wolf or a wolf et. <laughs> and they don't want to hear what the sheep have to say. Now, it's not as if Jesus is saying, I'm sending you out to a dangerous place, don't worry, but at the last second, I'm just going to snatch you out of that problem and deliver you. Now, we know that he can do that. We know that he might do that. But we have no guarantee that he will do that and deliver us from any danger we have. In fact, there's no promise of deliverance here for the sheep when they're amongst wolves. This is a whole lot like a story in Daniel 3. Some of you know the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, they were told that they had to bow down and worship the king. I mean, this wolf was telling these sheep, you're going to need to bow down. Otherwise, we got this red-hot oven for us to toss sheep in, we're going to have sheep chops for supper, barbecued sheep. I don't know if you remember what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to say. Go back and read it this afternoon. Daniel chapter 3. They said, our God is able to deliver us, and we think he will, but even if he doesn't deliver us, we will still not bow down to that golden image. 
they stood up to the wolves. But some of you are still thinking, but wolves will be wolves. They kill sheep. But knowing this, Jesus adds, he gives us something else that sounds a little strange. He said, be as shrewd as serpents and as harmless as doves. I mean, how many of you, a lot of you probably, I don't mind being a dove, kind of a flighty little goofy little bird. <laughs> I don't want to be a snake. I thought, I'm associating snakes with the Garden of Eden. Now, what does this mean? Well, the primary point of comparison would be this, that snakes know how to disguise themselves by camouflage. They know how to hide under rocks. They know how to find the shadows. They know how to stay out of the way. And applied to us, what Jesus would be telling us today is, I'm sending you out sometimes into what could be very dangerous situations dealing with unbelievers, so be smart about it. Be cautious. Pay attention. Uh, don't be stupid. Uh, don't go up and poke, poke wolves in the face. <laughs> I mean, you're going to go out there, you've got the gospel. I have a lot of people who poke wolves in the face all the time on my Facebook page. And so I keep repeating the same message I've repeated for the last two and a half COVID years. We are not called to be condemners of wolves. We are called to gospel wolves. That's a big difference. You might want to think about that as you reply to people. See, I know the part about doves speaks to our integrity. We need to be honest. We need to be truthful. We need to be gospeling people. And if there's trouble, let it be because of the wolves, not because we do something foolish by forgetting who we are and whose we are and turn out condemning people for all the wrong things that we think that they're doing. But let's go back to a crucial question here. You know, Jesus, we know you're the good shepherd. We know that. And we all grew up singing, I am Jesus, little lamb. We didn't realize we were going to get sent out with the big bad wolf someday. We know you love us, so why would you put us in these situations? Why are we sent out amongst wolves? Well, the Bible passage here gives us three answers. Here's answer number one. I think it'll be up on the screen somewhere. That we might bear witness to the nations. Now, that word nations in the Greek is ethnoi, which is really to bear witness to every ethnic group. Again, the scriptures, let me read, remind it, it says, because people will hand you over to the Sanhedrin, flog you in their synagogues, beware of them. You will even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them and to the nations. But when they hand you over, don't worry about how or what you should speak, for you will be given what to say at that hour because you are not speaking, but the spirit of your father is speaking through you. And to that I say, thank you, Jesus, because sometimes I don't know the answer. I mean, just think about how Jesus puts it. He says, people will hand you over. Well, that's bad. They will beat you. Uh, that's even worse. Uh, they will turn you over to government officials. I, that doesn't sound very good either. But Jesus says, but I'm going to send you out there to bear witness to the nations. And that's good. You don't have to worry about what to say. That's even better. And then he says, and I'm going to give you the words to say when you need it. And I think, thank you, Jesus. See, in other words, Jesus is in charge of this operation. It's not just send a bunch of uh, helpless little sheep out to testify about the gospel. Jesus sends us out into these situations, not with a, uh, a promise of deliverance, but with a promise of power to speak the gospel to people who need to hear the gospel. I, I find that the whole point is very clear. Jesus is in charge of everything that happens to us. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad, the positive, the negative, all of that kind of stuff. He knows all about the wolves. Uh, he sends us out amongst them anyway. It's been part of his plan from the very beginning. When people fell into sin, what did Jesus decide to do? I am going to work on, do everything I can to save those people who've fallen away. And I need to send the sheep out there to do their part. Now, Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 33, what would happen to those who follow him. He said, if you follow me in this world, you will have tribulation, but take courage. Why? Because I, Jesus, have overcome this world. Many Christians that live here in the West uh, don't take verses like this very seriously. We hear about mounting atrocities taking place like in Ukraine where people are being indiscriminately killed and butchered. 
we think about how the Chinese are systematically eradicating an entire population of the Uyghur people in forced labor camps. We think about those places over in Saudi Arabia where Christians are beaten and persecuted and hung. And we think, well, that could never happen here in Taney County, Branson, Missouri. And I'd say, but don't be sure, so sure about that. Because Christians today, sheep today, are being persecuted. We are being told what we can say, how we can act, and what we can do with our stinking Bible. We can just shut the book and shut up. Don't come up and tell us what Jesus has to say. Now, I've been through my Bible a lot. I don't know of any Bible passage. Maybe some of you know this. Some of you are Bible scholars. But if you can find this, but I, I have no, of no promise in the Bible that says American Christians will somehow be shielded from suffering. I can't find a passage like that. So there's your first answer to the question, why does Jesus send us out as sheep amongst wolves? And he does it so that we can bring a testimony to the people. Here's the second reason. It's so that we might demonstrate the reality of our faith. He talks about how brother will betray brother to death and father child. Children will rise up against their parents, have them put to death. You'll be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be delivered. When they persecute you in one town, escape to another, for I assure you, you will not have covered the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. In these verses, what Jesus is doing is really describing the total breakdown of society. Now, we could probably have an interesting discussion if we had talk back time after this and say, how do we see our society being broken down systematically these days? We want to make sure that we don't get into this condemning of stuff, but to say, where does the gospel fit in here? Brother betraying brother. Father betraying their children. Children betraying their parents. Christians being hated by people. And you kind of end up running from one place to another place. And maybe the most sobering part of this is verse 23. It says, you're not going to have covered the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. He said, you, you want to get out there. Many commentators said, when Jesus comes back, there are going to still be places in Israel where they don't accept Jesus. This is how it will be until Jesus comes. Sheep are going to go out and live amongst wolves to be a testimony to the nations and to show the veracity of your faith. See, wolves are still in the prowl, sheep are danger everywhere, trouble on every side. So why would Jesus do this? Well, this is answer number three, so that we might become like Jesus through our suffering. It says a disciple is not above his teacher or a slave above his master. It's, it's enough for a disciple to become like his teacher and a slave his master if they call the head of the house Beelzebul. By the way, that means um, Baal, uh, the prince. It also means the Lord of flies, and it also means the, 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 Lord, of the, the Lord of the dung pile. I mean, if they're going to call Jesus names like that, how much more the members of his household? I've been called a variety of names. Uh, the one I, the one I, first time I ever heard this, somebody said, well, you're just nothing but a Jesus freak, and I just said, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, they, he's like, what do you mean, thank you? I just, I just made some critical comment. No, you, you said the truth for a change. See, Jesus is the teacher. You and I are his disciples. Jesus is the master. We are his slaves. Jesus is the head of the house. We're part of his family. And what did they do to him? They crucified him. So the question is, can we expect anything better? Now, here's one answer to this. Only a fool would send sheep out amongst the wolves. I had somebody hear that story one time and said, you know, only a fool would send sheep out amongst a bunch of wolves because that's how you get sheep killed. Sheep have absolutely no defense against wolves. And I said, okay, so only a fool would do that or the Son of God. See, he's telling us we're in danger all day and he sends us out anyway. They've got us surrounded, friends, and he sends us out anyway. They've actually killed a few sheep sends us out anyway. Jesus is saying, as I send you out, guess what? I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go before you. I'm going to prepare the way. 
You're going to find people of peace out there, and they're going to be with you. By the way, I am above you. I am beneath you. I'm on either side of you. I hold you in the palm of my hand. You will never, ever be alone, not for one single second. See, he's not promising that we would not be hurt. We might be. He's not telling us that we might we would never die. Who knows? I know a lot of people who've died in defense of the gospel. But here's the point. The real application, the real bottom line of this whole sheep and wolves thing is Jesus knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Sheep among wolves sounds crazy. It's not a mistake. It's not a misprint. That's the plan. Jesus intends to show the world his followers are not wimpy little people to show us what our faith is all about. Has anybody here come on, serve in the Coast Guard? Well, in the Coast Guard, they have a motto, and the motto says you have to go out, but you don't have to come back. I think that's really the same thing for us as Christ followers. You need to go out into this world. You may not come back. But if we are sheep in the midst of wolves, what comfort is there? Well, I want to end with one more Bible passage. I think it will be up here on the screen. It's from Romans chapter 8. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or anguish or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as, oh, right there, sleep, sheep to the, be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that not even death or life, angels or rulers, things present or things to come, hostile powers, height or depth, or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, friends, there are wolves out there. But we're all going to be leaving the sheep pen today. And Jesus says, I'll go with you. And I'll even give you the words. And in that confidence, we're going to be heading out, knowing that nothing can happen to us that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we're actually glad that this is in the Bible. Sometimes we confess that our hearts are filled with fear, particularly when it comes to sharing our faith with, well, with the wolves. We thank you that you have called us that you have sent us and that you go with us even in the midst of these times. So we pray today for courage to go where you send us, to stay where you put us, and to speak the good news of Jesus so that whether by life or by the death, Christ might be glorified in us. We pray that you burn this truth into our hearts that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with our next song, which is called Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Just maybe stay, remain seated. Guide me, O Thou Great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but Thou art mighty. Hold me with Thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream does flow. Let the fiery, cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliver, strong deliver, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, then we know that peace of 
Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to Thee. I will ever give to Thee. Well, you guys sing good. You can come out and visit us and restore, help out a little bit. I, I leaned over and told my wife, I said, we would be done by 1045. She said, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I'm just going to save enough time for Pastor Mark. Um, one of the things that uh, we do in terms of our faith is we acknowledge our faith. And I think we had <clears throat> communion services kind of planned in two different directions today. But because I'm not at Restore, we didn't have communion. And so it was communion with drop here today. Uh, so normally we would do the Apostles' Creed, what it is we believe. But on, when we have communion, we normally do the Nicene Creed. And it's a great way to remind us as sheep what it is we truly believe in. And so I invite you at this time to please stand and let's join together in uh, confessing our faith to one another. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, first man, and was crucified and also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Receive this blessing. It comes from Numbers chapter 6. Words that the Lord said to Moses. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Well, we have peace from the shepherd. It is well with our soul. Let's sing. That's a nice transition, wasn't it? It's well with our soul. I got ahead of you. Yeah, there are probably a few more announcements to be made. Don't forget to take a look at all the announcements on the way out. I mean, if you don't know anything else, talk to people here. They, they know everything. Uh, Bible studies, when to have the men's breakfast, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, card shower for Rosemary. Yeah. And now, sheep, it is well with our soul. Let's sing.
it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul though Satan should buffet though trials should come let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul and Lord haste the day when the day shall be sighed the clouds be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and the Lord shall ascend even so is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul that's good stuff that's good stuff well go in peace sheep serve jesus with great joy i'll see you at the door on the way out of this sheep pen and hopefully someday